hour is now for game changers to emerge. Be truthful to who you are. Life is so short. So it drives me nuts when people say we don't have the time. We have 24 hours a day. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself, teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get there. You're either going to get healthier and wealthier or you're going to go bust. Your choice. Pursue what you really want with everything you got. Brace yourself, steady your nerves, put your head down, and tackle whatever you face head on. I need you to believe in every possibility that you have and understand that it is not over for you. Let your work get your opportunity. Let your work get your praise. Let your work open up doors. Let your work get people paying attention. Let your work get the whole world to notice. Stop thinking. Stop procrastinating. And you got work. Goliath! There will be many giants in your life. Whatever goal you have, get up and run after it. Your brain is designed to keep you safe. Your soul, your intuition, your human spirit is designed to make you soar. That's not just a book in your hand, that's your sword. That's not just an idea, that's your sword. That's not just a dancing gift, that's your sword. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit during the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. I'm going to rise, and I'm going to show the world that greatness is obtained by a man that never stopped pushing. It's not easy to go through so many different circumstances, so many different challenges. It's not easy knowing that you may lose your home because you got laid off your job. You gotta set the example. This, this is another obstacle. This obstacle cannot define me. It's not gonna cripple me. It's not gonna be responsible for me stepping away for the game that I love. You need to rise up and understand what success is all about. We gotta rise up, we gotta start, we gotta finish. You should work so hard that you collapse in the bed at night. Then you fall asleep, wake up and rise up again. Through all the bumps in the road and the stormy weather, the heart of a champion you can never measure. You can't stop people from trying to limit your dreams, but you can stop it from becoming a reality. You know, I have the same work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. Architects, pioneers, innovators, students, athletes, lawyers, doctors. I'm sounding the alarm that a new mentality will emerge inside of you. I need you to believe in every possibility that you have and understand that it is not over for you. Now is the moment to start making your impact. When you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. The fact that you're still alive and still on this earth, even though it's been challenging and rough, and sometimes you get discouraged and uninspired to keep going, God has a plan. You will grow through what you go through. Don't be sad, be grateful. Don't dwell, do. Don't complain, create. We got this. As long as there's breath in my lungs, there's hope in our hearts, and giving up's not an option. You and I and we, no matter what your unique situation, your storm, your struggle, your trauma, your abuse, your wounds, your scars, no matter what they are, you are not a product of your past, you are not a product of your environment or your current unique situation, but you are always a product of how do we navigate through our storm. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you. It's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. That dream is not going to wait 
Take a say, take a breather. It's gonna say, come catch me. Catch me if you can. You've got to block out all of the noise around you that's going to tell you you can't do it. Just believe that you can. Tell yourself, I am more than my circumstances. I am more than my demons. I am great and I will give my gift to the world because this is what I was born to do. Go get it, son. Go get it. Be sweet. 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 Go get it, son. If you're going to see it, if you're going to see breakthrough, then you are going to have to be okay with the process that is required. The one thing you need to do to go where you've never gone before, to have what you've never had before, is to change the way you think. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's going to be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Believe that you can. Believe it's possible for you to have it. Don't lay on your back. Anything that comes your way, you got to be prepared to accept the challenge and go through it. And stop thinking about the negative. Stop talking about the negative. Ask yourself, what would amazing look like for you? As long as that heart is pumping blood, you're not dead yet. They haven't put rose petals on your box yet. Make sure every breath you take counts for something. Continue to pursue purpose. And we all got a purpose. Every one of you in this room were born to not just exist, but to experience life. Every one of you in this room, you were born to leave your fingerprints on history. Courage. Courage is the key to life itself. It takes courage to act. Part of being hungry when you've been defeated, it takes courage to start over again. If I could do anything for you, I would walk into your life and I would breathe courage into your life. And courage is a result of confidence. You have never seen a courageous person that didn't have confidence. Human potential is not of any kind of measurable limit. It can go as far as you desire or as, as far as you have the courage to walk. How do you stand up to massive external pressure? Courage. And courage is something that comes from relationships. You know, it's external. There are days we're going to doubt ourselves, there are days that storms are going to rise, and we have to have people who say, I got your back. You need to do this. We need you. The world needs this. Keep going. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the judgment that what you want is more important than your fear. It takes courage to achieve your goals, man. It takes courage to be successful. Patience and inner voice makes you unbeatable. You've lived a life dominated by doubt and fear. How do you step into bravery? Step. Take the step. No more would I live like this. It takes courage to fight back. If you don't have the courage to act, life will move on you. You don't work for nobody else. You work for your mama, you work for your sister, you work for your aunts, you work for your grandma, you work for your family, you work for your kids. You ain't making no other man rich. Do you have the courage to stand there though the storms keep raging? It takes courage to be successful. It takes courage to win. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to go where you've never gone before. There are a lot of people who are born in situations where they say, well, I just, I'll never get out of this. So, they won't. 
Uh, I say to people who say, well, I, I would like to have done so and so and so. So you could have done it. So, well, I couldn't get out of here. Man, the bus runs every day. I know you're tired. I know you're broken. And it feels like you can't take any more. When you have come to the end of yourself. But all of this means one thing. That you are a survivor. Your greatest weakness, the hurt, the pain, the betrayal, the feeling that you get when you wake up and you are inundated with so much responsibility. It feels like you can't breathe. Paralyzed by the pain of life. And I can only imagine what it's been like to be you. But I'll tell you this, there is a switch inside of every one of us. And at any moment in life, you can turn that switch from surviving to winning. Because ultimately, survival is an illusion. There's only two types of people in this world. There's people who lose, and there's people who win. And it's hard to be a loser, and it's hard to be a winner. Today, I want you to make a decision to flip the switch inside of you from surviving to winning. It's time to win. See, the human being is the highest order of creation on earth. And one thing I am crystal clear about is that at any moment in your life, you can come across a speech or a piece of information. And if that information is applied, that revelation, it can forever alter the fabric of your existence. It's in the midst of our greatest storm. If you, if you can hear my voice, you've survived. You survived the hurricane. You survived the storm. You survived the trial. You survived the betrayal. You survived it all. In order to change your life, all you gotta do is flip this switch from surviving to winning. See, a survivor will sit and wallow in the pain of the past, but a winner will build even when they are broken. I may be weak, I may be hurting, I may have pains, I may have been down, but I am not out. I am getting out of this hole. Today, I'm getting out of the pit of misery and into my destiny. Your pain is not bigger than your purpose. And even though you have been crushed in this very moment, you still have your calling. Flip the switch from weakness to winning, from hurting to conquering, from losing to champion. Um, what I've learned is to, to, to always keep going. Always. You know, there's, there's been times, particularly early in my career, where it just feels like this is the end. Um, but what I've come to find out is that, you know, no matter what happens, the storm eventually ends. And when the storm does end, you want to make sure that you're ready. And so I've really learned to put one foot in front of the other, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, because eventually that storm passes. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. Well, every time I step on a basketball court, I'm going to put a strong effort out there on the floor. I'm, I'm not going to leave anything on the floor. Kobe pops out. Kobe's going to go. Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. 
And as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant, already working out. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool, it's Kobe. So I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down, and of course I still hear the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out? So he was working out, for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. Right. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves, right. you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch another 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand like why why he, he works like that. Right. So after games, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. And he's like, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not saying I right. dislike you as a person. You just, you inspire me to be better. Right. And it was the first time I started to see this level of competitiveness where I said, I need to start doing more. Wow. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, you know, it's competitiveness, yes, but it's a simple um, theory or, or idea to live life by. If you're going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. No matter what it is, if you're going to do it, do it to the best of your ability. If you love what you do and it's making you happy, all the hard work and perseverance will pay off. I once had a guidance counselor tell me that I shouldn't play basketball that it would never amount to anything for me. His negativity towards me made me strong. You can't stop people from trying to limit your dreams, but you can stop it from becoming a reality. Your dreams are up to you. I encourage you to always be curious, always seek out things you love, and always work hard once you find them. It drives me crazy when people say that they don't have enough time to go to the gym for 45 minutes a day and work out. Or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve. If it is physically improve or if it is mentally to improve. Imagine you read one hour a day about history. How much you will learn after 365 hours in one year. Think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on the business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because we have, when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day, so it gives you still 18 hours. And there's someone shaking their head out here in front to say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? But just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day, the average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours, so we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with these six hours? What do you do with these six hours? Then we eat a little bit, then we schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college. I went and worked out five hours a day. And I was working on construction. Because in those days in bodybuilding, there was no money. We didn't, I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything. So I had to go to work. So I worked in construction. I went to college, I worked out 
in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all of that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. And this is why I'm standing here today. What would you like to do? If you don't like what you're doing and you don't like where you are and you don't like your relationships and you don't like X, Y, or Z, what do you want? What do you like? And then you gotta be able to add passion to it to activate that thing and make that dream a reality. Are you fully aware of the bridges that are required to cross over to make your dream a reality? I think a lot of people, they have this vision in their head, this dream, but they don't know how to make it a reality. We navigate through life and we keep missing the bridges to bridge the gap between dream and reality. So do you know what is required of you? Are you aware of what is required of you to make happen what you see only in your head? I want to give you another quote. Almost every man wastes part of his life in attempts to display qualities which he does not possess. I want you to ask yourself the question, are you the person that is projecting a different you to the world on social media, on your websites, in your meetings? Are you projecting a different you? Are you the same person in private? And I know that there are multiple versions of yourself or even I have multiple versions of me, but are they consistent? I wanna ask you the question, are you aware of your why? Are you aware of your why? So now that you've discovered, okay, I'm not doing what I wanna do, and I need to learn how to do what I want to do and I need to figure out the bridge to bridge the gap between the dream and the reality. Do you know why you want to do what you actually want to do? What is your why? Because if the why is great enough, if you're aware of that why, then you can begin to back that why up with work ethic. Every why has got to be backed up by work. You want to be committed? You want to be consistent. You want to be creative. You want to be purposeful. You want to be reflective and you want to be grateful. These are just a few things that you want to be as you are moving forward in your self-awareness. You've identified your weaknesses. You will identify that there is a, there is a gap between who you are, what you want and where you want to be. There's a massive gap, awareness. And the acceptance of that awareness is the bridge to the future. This is going to connect you to your destiny tribe. Your destiny tribe comes with multiple types of people. What would you like to do? What do you believe you've been destined to do? What talents, skills, giftings, and abilities do you possess to support your desire to do it? What are your motives for wanting to do it? Why do you want to become what you are looking to become? What steps are you taking to become and to live the life, to make the dream a reality? When you have awareness and you have your actions, but you have no accountability, you set yourself up for a great fall. Let me ask you a question. What price are you willing to pay to make the dream a reality? How aware are you? Are you aware of the price that you are willing to pay relationally, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually? There is a price to pay to manifest a dream. You know, two of the greatest moments in an individual's life is the day they were born and the day that they realize why they were born. Are you aware of your why? Why are you here? What are you doing? Who are you connected to? What are your people, your places, and your purpose? Life is so short. Life only has only a little time. Although it will continue to go on, You cannot hold on and think that every day is promised to you. 
We have all experienced great losses in our life. We have all felt that pain of losing a loved one, someone that we cared about. But yet we're still here. And now we must go on. But what is the example that we're gonna leave? What kind of leadership and what kind of leadership qualities do we have? How do we go on? How do we lead the next generation? Hate is not going to make it work. Being afraid to be truthful to who you are will only limit who you truly are inside. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Don't let anyone take away who you are and how true you are and what you matter in this world to so many other people. Don't be afraid to be honest. Don't be afraid to be truthful. Don't be afraid to be different. Even being different can be difficult to a lot of people. But I guarantee you this, there's nobody in the world that can do you. When the time comes, what would you leave behind? What legacy will be left behind to remind others of your greatness, of your losses, of your victories, of your sorrows. This is a short life that we all have. And it's not easy. It's not easy living it every day. It's not easy to go through so many different circumstances, so many different challenges. It's not easy getting that pink slip, knowing that this may be your last day on your job. It's not easy knowing that you may lose your home because you got laid off your job. This type of pain and these different circumstances, many people are always going to come back and say, well, that's life. We cannot blame life. It is not life that makes these challenges what they are today. It is the purpose. And purpose never lies. It will always tell you the truth. But why you exist in this world right now, I need you to hold on. I need you to hold on strong and don't give up. I need you to believe in every possibility that you have and understand that it is not over for you. I need you to understand life is always going to be good. But always keep in mind, sooner or later, we all got to punch that clock. So carry on. And don't give up, and don't give in, and do the best that you can to have the right attitude to make your existence matter. I know what it feels like to be broken. 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 
I know what it feels like to be homeless. I know what it feels like to be ignored. You get into a place where you feel like nobody needs you. Nobody believes you. I know what it feels like for people to tell you to write the book, watch the course, and then when you do it, nobody invests in it. The hour is now for game changers to emerge, for the forgotten, for the rejected, for the ignored, to come out of the ashes and into the light, out of obscurity and into victory. Take the throw with everything that you have in you. The hour is now. I am coming for the throw. I am coming for every room that you lock me out of. Every realm that I step into, I will dominate. I am determined to win, no matter what season I'm in. When you counted me out, when you rejected me, when you overlooked me, when you ignored me, I waited painfully in obscurity for the opportunity to take the throne. I am your replacement. Your rejection has forged a new fire inside of me. Man, I'm climbing the ladder. I'm bringing my team. I'm coming for magazines and movie screens, billboards and awards, movie scores and labels. I'm signing checks and contracts on every table. I'm no longer stuck in the basement, stuck in the gutter. I'm leaving the casket. You saved me vacant. You were here, my feet walking the pavement. No more complacent, driven, persistent, and relentless are all an understatement. Who am I? I'm sorry, not sorry. I am unapologetically your replacement. I have worked while you have slept. I have learned while you have partied. I have saved while you have spent. And I will live like you dream. I am relentless. I am resilient. I will not back down. I will not surrender. I am now an agent of change and transformation. I am your replacement. Every room that I walk in, I will change the game. I'm influencing neighborhoods and towns, startups and corporations, from the forgotten about hoods to the nations. I'm coming to reconstruct and resurrect broken foundations, leaving everybody that rejected me out of the equation. The marathon continues. The Mamba mentality has left a mark. Shout out to the NBA legend, Kobe, and your daughter, Gigi. From Tom Brady to Drew Bledsoe, rain, sleep, or snow, I cry. Remember the time when you wanted more. Remember the time when there were people in your life that did not believe in you. Remember the time when you honestly gave up on the possibilities of the uniqueness that you had inside. Remember there was a time that you complained so much, but yet did so little. There comes to a point in your life that you must recognize that there's a little bit more that has to be done than just complaining about it. You have to realize that you don't have any other opportunities waiting for you if you're not willing to work for the first opportunity that's been given to you. You don't have a lot of time left. So there's no reason to complain. 
you're not even in a position to complain. You have to figure out that there has to be another idea about you. And you have to understand that there has to be something even greater and more challenging waiting for you. And if you're not willing to step outside of your comfort zone, if you're not willing to understand the principles and the possibilities that you have within yourself, then everything that you are thriving for, everything that you are hungry for, will soon come to an end. Now I'm not here to preach to you about this. I'm here to let you know that there are things that are going on around you right now that are far greater than your complaining. You complaining about so much, but yet you show no action. If you could trade places with someone right now and the person that you are trading places with may have it just a little bit tougher then you have it going on in your life right now. So many people are suffering from so many things in this world at this moment. But yet you're complaining. So many people in this world right now wish they could trade places with you. But yet you're still complaining. You don't have that right to just give up. You don't have that right to just throw in the towel and say that it's over for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that the reason that you are existing in this world right now is because you have things that must be done and only certain people are qualified to take it to the level that it needs to be taken to. For there should never be a limitation to wherever it is that you are seeking and how far you are willing to travel and how far you are willing to go. Sometimes people tend to get a little lazy. Sometimes people like to put themselves in this little bitty box and just say that they are okay with where they are. There can never just be an okay to anything when it comes to that life. There should never just be a complacent mindset. How do we evolve? How do you evolve? How do you grow? One thing about success, there are gonna be many struggles. There are gonna be many challenges. And there are gonna be a lot of things that you may not even understand. But you got to go back to where it started. Remember when you want it more. Because you cannot satisfy your hunger with negative energy. Being negative doesn't help you to grow. Being doubtful doesn't give you the power that you need. You have to come to a point in your life that you must realize that there are things that are going on that is testing you. And maybe you may be in a position where you feel that you are broken or you feeling that you're gonna be broken. But I'm here to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that you are built to last. I'm here to let you know that you don't have the right to complain anymore. I'm here to let you know that you got to keep on living and living on strong. I dare you to take a trip to your local hospital. And if you have an opportunity to walk down those corridors and witness so many different people, different age groups, different ethnicities. And each one of these individuals are fighting something. They're dealing with some type of sickness. And some of these sicknesses, they may not be able to recover from. 
I dare you to walk down a neighborhood where there are many people that are homeless and have no place to go, no food to eat, barely even have clothes on their backs. I dare you to realize that maybe you just don't have it so bad after all. Maybe it's time for you to realize and recognize that your troubles are not that bad. Maybe it's time that you realize that you need to get away from the drama that's in your life. Maybe it's time for you to stop chasing misery and start chasing your dreams. Reconnect with yourself. Because this is not the time for you to be wasting putting yourself back instead of pushing yourself forward. Ladies and gentlemen, you have so much, so much to offer, so much to give, so much to do, but doing it and sitting around waiting for it to happen it's just going to stay in neutral. You have to electrify the desire that you have, that you once had. So the next time you feel like complaining, you feel like worrying, and you're so concerned about other things that doesn't necessarily concern you, ask yourself, is it making you better? Is it taking you higher? Are you going further? Or are you just being complacent? Complacent and complaining and worrying and doing things that are not better for you. Are you gonna realize that maybe just going up that mountain does take a little bit more work than just having something handed to you? Are you gonna be that person that realize that if and when you get to the top of the mountain, it don't just stop there. You got to figure out another way to go even higher. You have to electrify and get all the things that are necessary within you to start doing the things that you need to do so when the time comes, you can kick down that door and move towards the possibilities of being the best of who you really are. Don't lose yourself and the things that's not going to give you the strength and the capacity of understanding that you matter for something. Don't lose yourself in fear. Don't lose yourself in doubt. Dare yourself to be better. Dare yourself to be unique. Dare yourself to be the best possibility that the world has yet to see. Whatever industry you pick, if you outwork everybody, if you try to be a little smarter than everybody, if you try to be a better salesperson than everybody, if you try to be better prepared than everybody, you've got your best chance because if you don't do it and somebody else does, you know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You know, work, mm -hmm. I actually work mm -hmm. like someone's spending 24 hours, working 24 hours to take it all away from you. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way I look at it. What would you say is the number one reason why people fail? Lack of brains, lack of effort. Lack of brains, lack of effort. Yeah, they just, they don't do the work. They don't learn, you know. When you walk in the room, when you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition. You know, unless you're just, extremely lucky and if there's going to be competition that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started and if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers you're going to lose but most people don't consider that they don't do the work they don't learn more about their industry they don't know even about their business i mean and so you've got to put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. 
because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing, otherwise I'm gonna kick your ass, you know, and you're not gonna outwork me. And so, you know, the combination is usually what kills businesses early on more than anything. You could, within a five, 10 minute, minute interview, say, this dude's not gonna make it as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can typically tell, right? I can tell um, but by um, their passion, I can tell by their focus, I can tell by their preparation. You know, there, there's a whole realm of things in any business. Here, you know, here's, here's the business you're in, and here's a thousand things that influence whether or not you're gonna be successful. You know, through my experience in businesses, I can put myself in his position and say, okay, here are 900 of the thousand things he has to be aware of, and then go through and ask. And by how many of those or her um, issues they've been able to address already, that kind of gives me a sense of how hard they're willing to work. You know, and I can tell by the questions they ask me. So all I have to do is say, okay, what do you want to know? And you know, when they start saying, what should I do? They ask you. Yeah, well, you know, and that's fine, right? And I want them to ask questions, but you know, people like to say, you know, the only stupid questions are the one you don't, ones you don't ask, and that's not right, right? Because the questions you ask tell me, tell whoever more about you than anything else you do. Because in particular, it tells me about your preparation. If you ask me questions about just basic things that you should have known and you should have down to a science, that's going to disqualify you almost more than anything. If you're not always learning, if to this minute, if, if I'm not continuously learning, if I'm not just absorbing as much as I can absorb, someone else is gonna kick my ass, right? So you talk about paranoia. The, the greatest source of your paranoia should be knowledge. If someone else knows more than you do, and if you're not learning, if you don't know, the lear if you don't know how to learn, if you don't have a thirst for learning and acquiring information, you're, you're SOL. Do you think there needs to be a healthy level of paranoia? Oh, absolutely. There needs to be. Oh, yeah. I okay. mean, I always say, you know, for every one of my businesses, I, I say, what would I do to kick my own ass? You right? So whatever business you have, there's somebody trying to put you out of business. There's somebody trying to, to take a bite out of mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. And it's better for you to figure out how they're going to do it rather than they do it. Um, and so, yeah, that's being paranoid. And so you have to be paranoid. You have to anticipate other people's next moves. And you can't ever, you know, downplay the competition. I was at a business plan competition this morning for, at a college and they were kind of being dismissive of the competition and so you can't ever do that. You know, they're out there trying to take you down and they're not just going to sit still and if you're good, really, really good, you're going to inspire them to work even harder, faster, better. And so you have to be, you know, very self-aware of what you're good at and what other people are good at and, you know, a healthy dose of paranoia makes a big difference. I mean, it's very helpful. I don't belong in this room. I remember the videos had already been out. My numbers were great. And I would come in rooms and go, or, or like that room, like I go to a high school, like boom. I go to a youth detention center, boom. I go to a prison, boom. I come to corporate and go, I don't know if I belong in here. Everybody in the room don't look like me. They don't come from where I come from. I don't know if I belong here. And I'll never, for, I'll never forget. I had a conversation with Les Brown. Les Brown had called me to Orlando. We sat in the hotel and I left and I started talking to Les and I started naming like, yo, you Les Brown, this person, number one in the world. He said, don't you ever say that again. I said, don't say what? He said, you the best in the world right now. I said, what? He said, you the best in the world right now. There's nobody as good as you in the world. You're the best right now. The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. And when you walk out this room, I want you to go in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm the best right now. He said, before you even become number one, start to proclaim it and say it long before it happened. Say, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And when I was number 20, I started saying, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I went to the computer, and the world said exactly what I said, that Eric Thomas is number one in the world. I spoke it, the world heard it, and it activated. Your problem is that you don't believe you belong here. Your problem is that you don't think you should be sitting down here. So listen to me, there are those of you who said, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be the best at this company, right? But your value system says you believe in sleep more than you believe in grinding. That you're spending more money than you're making. Why? Because you're concerned with your, you're reading all the books and you're saying everything the books are saying. But those books are not in alignment with your values. And if you're going to go to the next level, your values are going to have to change.
when I believed that my voice was needed in this world, when I believed that I needed to be on the stage, not for myself, but to speak to a group of people who come from where I come from, a working class who don't know what it's like to make millions and millions of dollars, who don't understand what wealth looks like, that I needed to come in the room with a single parent mother, with a father not in my life, being homeless in a high school dropout, only somebody who comes from where you come from can tell you you belong. And I had to get my butt on stage because there's some folks that Les Brown can't reach. There's some folks that Tony Robbins can't reach. There's some folks that only I can reach. And so I need to be on the stage with them doing what I was called to do. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit during the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. When you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. Some of y'all been worshiped since you was in high school, so you don't really know how to grind. <laughs> like you talk grind, like I, I love it. Like I go into the weight room and y'all playing like Pac. Y'all playing Biggie, like y'all all in it. Like you like, you like Pac, but you don't have the spirit of Pac. You like love Pac, you like listening to Pac. You like listening to Biggie. You like to talk about the grind, but you don't really know what the grind's like. I know what the grind is like. I was homeless, I ain't out of trash can. Now, Go on, go on the internet right now. I'm one of the number one speakers in the world. I started from the bottom, like you like listening to it and see. Started from the bottom, now your, what's your bottom? What is your bottom when you've been worshiped since middle school? You've been tall your whole life, big your whole life. They worship you so much now that you think it's about you. You don't even know what the grind look like. I'm from Detroit, homeless. Mama got pregnant with me at 17 years old. High school dropout. Took me 12 years to get a four year degree. I'm coming now. It's in view. You finally made it to the big leagues and now you want to chill? Now you got the big head? Now you can't grind? You here now. You here now, you finally made it. And this is where you, you break up? This is where you start chilling? This is where you get comfortable? You made it now. You made it now. You in the big leagues now. They watching you now. This is where you make it permanent. Yeah, I saw it, I saw it. Perfect, perfect, nope. Practice don't make perfect. Practice make permanence. This permanent, y'all. This is permanent. You can go wherever you wanna go from here. It does not take talent. You don't have to be talented, right? You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be the quickest, the strongest. You don't have to be the most intelligent to get to where I am. That's what you gotta do. You just gotta grind though. You're grind, you gotta outgrind. So many of you heard me say this. Your father, listen to me, might own a company. Your mama might be a millionaire. You might come from privilege. Your daddy might hook you up with a car. He might know people, he might be able to get you a job, but you will not outwork me. And what you have to decide in your position in the NCAA, you have to make a decision that nobody in this league in your position will outwork you. I will walk away with stuff I never heard before, books I've never read before, audios that I've never seen before, going to conferences that I've never gone, hanging out with people that I've never hung out with before. This is nothing, God, this is just a dessert. There are those of you with phones, and every new phone that comes out, you get it. Every upgrade, you get it. Every piece of software, you get it. You are upgrading your technology, and you've not upgraded yourself. Listen to me closely, when you get to the point where enough is enough, when you get to the point where it hurt real bad, when you get to the point you can't take it no more, when you get to that point, the doors start opening, opportunities start happening. Listen to me very closely, it's our dream. Nobody's gonna see it like you do it. It's your dream, nobody's gonna feel it like you feel it. It's your dream, nobody's gonna be as dedicated to it as you are. It's your dream and they don't have to understand and they don't have to like it and they don't have to do it. It doesn't make a difference, it's your dream. And you, my friend, have been given the task to make it happen and you can't let anything stop you from doing what you were called to do. Study strategy over the years. 
and achieve the spirit of the warrior. Today is a victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is your victory over lesser men. There is a student mentality in all of us that must be tapped into. A student is resilient. A student is disciplined. It is only through discipline that you will experience the freedom of a warrior. A student never surrenders. See, the strategy is the plan. The strategy, the game plan, the plan of action, the recipe, the how must be studied before the first step is taken. I am convinced that so many of us lose because of what we were not willing to study. We must grow a discipline to deliberately investigate what we are getting ready to enter into. We must be calculated as we enter into new seasons, into new relationships. This is the road to becoming a warrior. An experienced, skilled, and calculated soldier. A fighter, a game changer. Somebody who refuses to stay down. This is somebody who is set apart from those who operate in the realm of normalcy. This is somebody who is above and beyond. We got a bit of a work ethic to go after it. A student is a disciple, and a disciple is disciplined. Discipline to achieve the spirit of the warrior. They are perfectly positioned for victory daily. Discipline is an invitation out of normalcy. A man who studies is a man who is allergic to average. So you are a warrior, and you don't even know it. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. After today, everything is about to change. Because change starts with you. To understand this is to know the difference between men and lions. I'm on government assistance and I run out of money and I had to buy Pampers for Jelani. And I had $11.42 in the bank. And I remember wrapping my son in a towel for two days. I remember the second day, like you said, I had my, my hand on Jelani's stomach and I said, don't worry, baby. Mommy will never be this broke or broken again. And that day, what shifted for me was I was willing, and I don't know if this is gonna sound crazy, I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well, if that's working for you, keep doing that. I knew it wasn't working for me any longer. I had hit my version of rock bottom. So I was willing to let go of everything and everybody. See, another reason why people won't get there is because the doorway is for you to fit through. You're trying to carry everybody else through because you're trying to be rescue 911. And you got to rescue you first. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. I'm much more valuable to them now. But I had to go through a window time of 10 years of judgment. You leaving us, hanging out with white people all the time. You going to these crazy countries. We, we don't know what you, I, I had to be willing to, to allow my conviction to make me inconvenienced. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. But most of us aren't like that. Facebook is an example. We want to be liked. 
well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing for loud? Every day before I checked in with anybody else. I was willing to inconvenience my entire life. My entire life. I was willing to disrupt my entire life to buy my future, to buy my possibility, to give my dream a chance. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the, on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for today? tomorrow what do you want to create it's not keeping score your brain is keeping score because your brain is designed to keep you safe your soul your intuition your human spirit is designed to make you soar when you get to the edge your brain will always tell you to step back it's always going to tell you to step back because you can fall, always. It's gonna tell you to step back. Because before you fail, the last time you did this, you saw someone else fail, you could hurt, you could be off work. It's gonna tell you, it's designed to keep you safe. So you have to be willing to play between your brain and your soul. And on some days, you gotta just listen to your soul. And you gotta say, I'm gonna leap, I'm gonna get to the edge. Most people are at the edge, and you're standing at the edge, and you're watching everyone else fly. That's pit my ride, watch my crib, all this stuff. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's gonna be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Because only three things can happen. You're either gonna jump and fly, or you're gonna jump and fall on something soft. Are you gonna fall down hard? Either way, you're gonna get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. You're not, your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. Before they really get your fingerprint. Before they really feel your breath. Before they really get your contribution. Before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. All I'm doing is giving my, my dream a chance. And I'm not extraordinary. You don't get off the hook. You don't get to be let off the hook. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision. The reason I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad was because I knew this time was coming. And we have, as a world, have never been here before. And so is it a spooky time? Damn yet. It. it is a, it is probably the most dangerous time ever, 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 ever. There's, there's nothing to compare it to because there's never been a world economy before. For example, you know, a hundred years ago, if there was a stock market crash in England, it didn't affect anybody. Mm. But now the US market goes down, the world goes down. So plus with social media and all this we're doing now, and. So we've never been here before. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited about it because I make more money in crashes than I do when they go up. So, but for the average person, they'll get wiped out. I'm afraid at the worst, I hope I'm wrong, but I think we're heading for a global depression. How does this play out for the average worker, Robert, for the small business owner? I mean, what does the next three months look like? Because it doesn't look pretty. I mean, people are already being laid off, made redundant. Businesses are, there's no cash flow in most of these businesses. How does that play out? Well, let me give one, one more step just to give you the size of it, okay? The national debt for World War II was 25 billion. Every day today, every day they're printing 125 billion. Every single day, that's like five World War II's per day, they're printing so much money to keep this, this think of a hot air balloon with a tear in it. And they're doing desperately trying to fix this tear, but it, no matter how hard they try, the tear has gone beyond, it's coming down. 
So in, in financial terms, it's called our debt to deep GDP has now gone from 60 to 90 to 105, it's going to 120. We're bankrupt. And they're gonna print more and more money, which means savers are losers, just as I predicted. Your money is gonna be worthless in a few years. Wow. So my message is the same as some of your other guests, this is metamorphosis type. Financial education in rich dad's terms is really financial transformation. And the definition of metamorphosis is very important. Metamorphosis, the definition is the evolution or the transformation from an immature form to an adult form. An immature form to an adult form. Metamorphosis is the same as a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. And Fuller always said there's nothing to predict a butterfly inside a caterpillar. So everybody listening right now, if you're struggling financially, just think of yourself as a little caterpillar. And this crisis is your cocoon. The question is, what do you emerge as? Do you emerge as a victim? You know, the world did that to me and the, the capitalists are crook and the rich are bastards and all this stuff. Or do you say, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. The same as my health. I am ground zero for the coronavirus. All that does is inspire me to get healthier. You're either going to get healthier and wealthier or you're going to go bust. Your choice. It sits between your ears, your heart, your body, your mind, your spirit, your attitude. This could be the best thing that ever happened to you, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if you turn on to a butterfly or somebody will step on you like a little worm. <laughs> it's your choice. You are battered, broken, and depleted. Some of you have been abandoned. Your greatest opponent is an enemy you cannot see, but you can feel. You can feel that abandonment. You can feel that agony, that anguish. You can feel that anger. You can feel the confusion. You can feel the laziness, the deceitfulness the depression, you can feel the garbage of guilt and fear. You can feel the dysfunction, you can feel it. That is the enemy, the battle, the fight for the future, the fight to rise is, is in your head, it's all in your head. Now is the moment to capture the vision. Let me tell you something. Here's what success is all about. You need these three things. Are you ready? You need skill set, mindset, and opportunity. Skill set, mindset, and opportunity. You need to rise up and understand what success is all about. Skill set, work on your skill. Mindset, work on your mentality, baby, and your opportunity will come. Trust me, when your opportunity comes, you better be ready. When your opportunity hits, you better respond, baby. And all the work you put in, all the grind you put in, when your opportunity shows up, you're going to be ready. Because hard work pays. Let me tell you something. Hard work will pay off. When you feel that you don't have the oxygen, when you feel like you're about to give up, when you feel like you're about to die, resurrect yourself and just rise, continue to move, continue to believe, continue to fight hard, and don't give up. You are not dead yet. You may be tired, but you are not dead. You may be broken, but you are not dead. You may be weary, but you are not dead. You have an opportunity to rise above what happened to you. I need you to make sure you understand the process, and the process means you gotta follow through. We gotta rise up, we gotta start, we gotta finish. We gotta rise up, we gotta start, we gotta finish. We gotta rise up right now, and we gotta start, and we gotta finish. It's time to get your bounce back, build your business, build your future. I don't care who did not invest in you, go after it. If nobody sticks their hand out to pick you up, get yourself up and run. You have something yet to do in this world. 
Don't worry about it. Trust in it. Believe in it. Rise. Yeah, there's a glass ceiling over your head. It's got garbage on it like guilt and helplessness and hopelessness and hurt. Let me tell you this. Life will keep you locked away in a glass coffin and dare you to shatter that glass. Everything changes today. Some of you are still trying to process what is happening in our world, our economy, the riots, the protesting, the earthquakes, the pestilence, the viruses, the racism, the climate shifting. It's a lot. And you have been intoxicated by the pain of your past. I tell people all the time, it starts in your head. There are going to be those dark times. And a lot of things are going to try to hold you down and keep you down. But you got to continue to rise. you got to continue to believe. A warrior is an average person with laser-like focus. Don't even worry about your ability. Don't you worry about opportunity. I need you to be a warrior right now and let your work get your opportunity. Let your work get your praise. Let your work open up doors. Let your work get people paying attention. Let your work get the whole world to notice. You got to work. Stop thinking. Stop procrastinating. And you got to work. I need you to rise up to fulfill your dreams. Rise up and attack your goals. There's no time to sleep. No time to nap. No time to waste. If you fall asleep, wake up and rise up again. You should work so hard that you collapse in the bed at night Sometimes in the afternoon you're so weary from grinding That your body just collapses That's okay, have sweet sleep But when you wake up, grind again Now is your time Now is your season I'm here to rise I came here to conquer Doubt is not bigger than your purpose Fear is not bigger than your purpose Insecurity is not bigger than your purpose your purpose is everything. If the oxygen is running out, if you feel like you're about to fall down, resurrect yourself and get back up and keep flying up higher. It doesn't matter where you are, whatever your story is, you can change the story. Rise when you think you can't carry on. Rise from your mistakes and failures. Rise and fight. Rise and make a difference. When others can't get up, you find a way to get up. Rise. You've heard this a million times, that the cemetery is full of potential. And that's true. Because that person didn't do what they needed to do through the dash. Dealing with agony and anger and anxiousness and you are ashamed if you want your future you gotta heal you keep trying to win and you're wounded because you have not confronted the dysfunction the embarrassment the emptiness the insecurity the jealousy the laziness the loneliness one of your superpowers is a made up mind. One that is fully persuaded to get it done every single day, no matter the task. I know it's gonna be hard. I know it's gonna be ups. I know it's gonna be downs. But you gotta rise up. You gotta stay committed because a shark never stops moving or it dies. I need you to become the CEO of you. Yes, fear is going to come. Yes, challenges are going to come. Yes, you're going to feel that you can't carry on. But you must continue to rise. You must continue to have faith. You must grow those wings and you must soar above and beyond the heavens. You must continue to rise. We 
need you to be a light in the midst of darkness. This world has gone crazy. This world needs you to rise up. This world needs your dream. This world needs you to achieve everything you got on the inside of you. This world needs you to be you. But in order for you to be you, we got to have you to rise up. I will be resilient. I will rewire my thinking. I will emerge. I will evolve. I will be immune to impossibility. I will be immune to the pain that is attached to my purpose. I will not be stagnant. I will not stay stuck in the mud that you left me in. I will evolve. I will rise. When others think that you can't carry on, rise away from the excuses. Rise away from the substitutions. You left me for dead. You buried my face into the ground! Did you think I would stay there? I must rise! This is for my future! This is for my children! This is for my destiny! This is for my legacy! There is no pain that is bigger than my purpose! I will rise! And don't quit on yourself. Keep believing, keep going up. I will rise. Have you ever been put in a position where you didn't think that you had the strength to carry on. You must never give up. You felt a sense of weakness. You wasn't clear about exactly what was necessary for you to get to where you needed to be. Never means under no circumstances. Do you give yourself permission to stop? I mean, it might cross your mind, you might be tempted, but you never give in to the temptation to quit. All quitting is is a temptation and you gave in to it. There is always an upgrade tied to your pain. Your tears have not been cried in vain. Your effort is not in vain. So when you encounter a major setback, if you encounter a major roadblock, say to yourself, wow, something huge must be on the way. You didn't understand why all of these things were pulling you down. You didn't realize that you were all by yourself in this particular situation. Not realizing that you needed something to electrify your ideas, to give you a sense of hope, to give you some recognition that work needed to be done. Quitting first starts as a thought. We all get that thought. It comes across your mind, I'm tired, I should quit. We all get those thoughts. It's not just you. But in order to finish, you gotta be able to take those thoughts captives. You gotta be able to talk yourself into it and stop talking yourself out of it. Man, I'm tired, I should quit. That's when you talk yourself out of quitting. Elevation requires patience and endurance because it often comes packaged in the form of pain. As you get closer to your breakthrough, it may begin to look like everything is falling apart. This is the time that you must wake up and realize that giving up is not the option that you must take. You gotta have that mindset that quitting is not an option. Give up? Who me? Never. Stop. Who me? Never. That's for the next guy. That's for the next girl. But not me. Why? Because I don't quit. That ain't how I do it. That ain't how I roll. I never give 
up. You must understand that there will come a time in your life that circumstances are going to challenge you no matter what you do, but you must never give up. Don't let the obstacles discourage you and make you believe that it's not meant to be. Pursue when it's hard. Pursue even when it would make more sense to give up. Not you, champ. You ain't the one. Not you, kid. You ain't the one to quit. Giving up is not what you do. You got the wrong one here, baby. Until you believe that. Until you feel that. Until you live that. We got work to do. You see, quitting is a mindset. Quitting is a mentality. If you quit enough, if you quit all the time, you build a reputation to quitter. And people get confidence in your track record. And they will bet against you. He won't finish. She won't finish. You know him. He always quit. But not you. We got to flip the script. There is purpose within you. But you must never give up. What they should say is you know him, he is relentless. You know her, she is relentless. You know them, they are tenacious. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it can't be done. Yes, you're going to face some challenges, but you are an overcomer. So don't you dare sit there and drown in self-pity. Yes, I'm talking to you. You might feel stuck. You might feel trapped. But if you look for a solution, I promise you will find it. I understand that it's going to get tiresome sometimes. I understand you're going to feel like quitting. I understand you're going to give up and you're going to want to say you don't have it anymore. But I'm here to let you know that you got to rise up and you got to continue to push forward. And you got to walk down that path. And if you get down, get back up. And if you're feeling alone, you're not alone for very long. You have got to find the inner beast within you because it has yet to be awakened. When you finish, my friend, you will be celebrated. When you finish, my friend, you will get your reward. Your prize is waiting on you. Your fans are waiting on you. Your respect is waiting on you. The admiration is waiting on you to finish. The race is not given to the swift or the strong, but those who endure to the end. If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. That you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. I've been a Navy SEAL for 36 years. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room, and the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. It seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened SEALs. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. It matters not whether you ever served a day in uniform. It matters not your gender, your ethnic or religious background, your orientation, or your social status. Our struggles in this world are similar, and the lessons to overcome those struggles and to move forward changing ourselves and changing the world around us will apply equally to all. If you think it's hard to change the lives of 10 people, change their lives forever, you're wrong. I saw it happen every day in Iraq and Afghanistan. But changing the world can happen anywhere and anyone can do it. 
So what starts here can indeed change the world. You will likely fail often, and it will be painful. It will be discouraging. At times, it will test you to your very core. At that darkest moment of the mission is a time when you need to be calm, when you must be calm, when you must be composed, when all your tactical skills, your physical power, and your inner strength must be brought to bear. If you want to change the world, you must be your very best in the darkest moments. If I have learned anything in my time traveling the world, it is the power of hope, the power of one person, a Washington, a Lincoln, King, Mandela, and even a young girl from Pakistan, Malala. One person can change the world by giving people hope. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Finally, in SEAL training, there's a bell, a brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all the students to see. All you have to do to quit is ring the bell. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to wake up at 5 o'clock. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to be in the freezing cold swims. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to do the runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. inside of every one of us, an ember that burns and begs us to become more than what we have ever been. This is the flicker of creativity, the spark of an idea, the outline of a design. You gotta make it! Happen, can't nobody else do it for you. You're in charge of your it. Every day the clock is ticking. Every year the calendar moves. Your it cannot be delayed forever. Your it gotta start with your first step. Your it gotta start with your first move. Matter of fact, it begins in your mind. It is your dreams. It is your purpose. It is your future. There are three types of people in this world. There are people who watch things happen. There are people who wonder what happened, and there are people who make things happen. You gotta determine which person you are. You can make a wish, or you can make it happen. You must first believe that you can, that you will, that you must, when you are no longer willing to tolerate being in the room of failure. Then that's when you're gonna break free. Are you gonna rise and go higher and go stronger than you ever did in your life? Or you're gonna look in the mirror and see that image and realize that you are more than the image in the mirror. There's enough fire inside of you. After everything you have been through, you've got to be able to see your value. Are you gonna realize that it is time for you to step up and make it happen? Or you're gonna put aside all your doubts and fears are you going to be strong enough to go forward? Are you going to allow weakness to tell you that you don't have what it takes to make it happen? There is no one like you in all of the earth. There is no one that can do 
what you can do. You are the only option. You are the only play. Nobody else is going to be able to do this. When you get that in your head that you are the only one that is going to be able to do this, that nobody's going to give you a handout, that you have to make this happen, that every room you walk into, you show up and you show out and you leave it all on the table. We don't have time to second guess. It's time for you to rise up and it's time for you to make that first step. It's time for you to start grinding so that you can make it happen. You got to make it happen. At the end of the day, you got to be strong. At the end of the day, you got to push forward. You got to fight forward. You got to make it happen. You must accept this truth. That you were born for such a time as this. And that at this very moment, all you have is all you need. Make it happen.